Hi there. So this is a channel update video and long overdue because uh, I just realised it was Christmas that I last did one of these. Um, thank you very much for the continued support. It's amazing. Um, the channel's had 437,000 views, there or thereabouts, 1,660 plus subscribers. Didn't think it would be possible. Um, you know how much I enjoy this hobby and how much I enjoy running the channel and interacting with you guys. Um, you know, it makes the hobby for me really. Uh, I, you know, I feel lucky um, just to sort of be a part of it. So uh, it's really good. Um, I thought I'd do this video in a different location this time rather than my shack. So it's, I'm up work, it's the end of the day. I'm not skiving, honestly. Uh, and, you know, I thought I'd just run through a bit of a summary of what's happened, what's going to come, etc, etc. So I've been lucky. The past few months um, I've obtained some hardware for use, for testing, that I haven't had to pay for. Um, some of it I have to send back, no doubt, but um, one of my subscribers, who should remain nameless because I don't know whether he would be happy for me to share it with you or not, but basically um, read my review in Radio User Magazine of the Texan S8800 and sent me his own German version and asked me to have it for a while and test it, see how it compares, and I'm kind of in the process of doing that now. Um, so that was great. Um, Benito um, sent me their super uh, mega active MA305 E field antenna that runs on 12 volts or 5 volts USB. You've seen the videos that I've uploaded based on that antenna. Again, superb bit of kit with a radiating element of, I can't remember what it is, it's like 14 centimetres or something, crazy, um, but brilliant. Uh, and brilliant if you're, a, uh, if you're into your de-expeditions as I am. Um, recently they've sent me another antenna for testing, uh, the Mega Dipole, which is coming soon. Um, and we've spent the last week or two going backwards and forwards with me testing it at my QTH, which is, um, actually uh, pretty challenging because um, it's not a magnetic field antenna um, it's a it's still an e-field antenna but obviously with two radiating elements it's a dipole uh, took a bit of uh, configuring put it that way um, because as a lot of you know my QTH is extremely noisy but I've got it working now and uh, is delivering now some really super results um, and at some point in the near future, I'll share some of them with you. Um, but yeah, superb. Surprised me. You know, it really did. Um, given that my shack is so noisy and, you, you know, I assumed that you'd have to, I could only really rely upon my Wellbrook loop, you know, a magnetic field antenna. Um, not so. So uh, that's an interesting development and I'll share some of that with you moving forward. Um, also, SDR Play, um, John Hudson um, contacted me, uh, as did George, the editor of uh, Radio User Magazine, and they sent me an SDR Play RSP1A for testing and to write a review, which I did, which went down really well. Uh, fortunately for me, I got to use the uh, uh, receiver, I still have it. Um, and subsequently, just before I went to Florida, John contacted me again and asked me if I'd be interested in having a go with the new RSP Duo, which, again, some of you have seen some videos already. Uh, dual tuner, superb. You can monitor a signal on long wave and in parallel monitor a signal on UHF, you know, anywhere up to two gigahertz. Um, it's super sensitive. Um, I've already copied quite a lot of DX on it. Not much has been uploaded yet, but uh, I'm doing that basically right now um, and yeah it's uh, an exciting time and I'm you know I feel lucky to uh, to have been given the opportunity to test some of this equipment before it's available for general release or as it becomes available um, you know and I have to you know I think the agreement is that you know I would write reviews and stuff uh, which I've done which I enjoy so that's all good um, yeah so you know the past few months have been busy really testing I've spent as much time testing other people's equipment as as my own, uh, but I don't mind that. You know, I'm a chartered scientist by trade. I love an experiment, as you know, um, and so yeah, it's all good for me. Um, I've still got a few receivers that um, I haven't 
really tested yet. The Eaton E1 is the obvious example. I bought, bought it over a year ago. I uh, still haven't really tested it properly, but I will do. Uh, I've also got the original Sony ICF 2001 from 1980, which I bought last year on eBay for about 50 quid. Um, I haven't really tested that. I think I've, I've uploaded one video with the shipping forecast using it. A sort of trip down memory lane, a bit of nostalgia. So that really needs to be tested. Uh, because it'd be interesting to compare the performance of you know the kind of the original digitally tuned uh, portable shortwave receiver against you know what's available today. We know its performance isn't as good as the legendary 2001D, um, but how good is it? You know, I, I, I'm interested to know. So that's a radio that I'm going to have to spend some time and uh, hopefully uh, create some uh, video material for us. Um, I've also got a Sony Captain 55. It does have an ICF number, but I can't remember it. But you guys know what it is. 1970s analog, kind of upright design, uh, typical kind of 70s industrial design, uh, sort of quite military looking. Um, I bought that at the uh, Ham Radio Rally uh, for Harwell uh, Amateur Radio Club. Uh, or amateur, uh, uh, I should say actually, Harwell Amateur Radio Society has at their radio rally. I think it was in February. Paid like 30 quid for it. The guy sold it me cheap because I've got talking and he obviously realised I was a bit of a collector of Sony uh, portables. So, uh, you know, that, uh, that hasn't appeared yet. Um, the uh, I've, I've still got a Texan PL880, which I've literally switched on once, which I got for Christmas and hasn't seen the light of day since then. So, uh, you know, that's another radio that... Uh, it's going to have to be aired at some point. Um, Tam has been trying to convince me to take that one to Brazil, and he's probably right because I think enough work has been done now to demonstrate how brilliant the XH data D808 is. So, um, yeah, maybe he's right about that, and that's what I'll do. Um, so, a few receivers that you know haven't really appeared on the channel, but you know, will do. Uh, you know, I keep meaning to get around to it, um, but uh, right now I'm kind of busy testing the SDR. Uh, play RSP Duo uh, and a few other bits and pieces. Um, so you know what's so what's in terms of what's coming up. I, I've already got a number of videos in the can, so to speak, comparing the S, the Texan S eighty eight hundred against the XH Data D eight hundred eight uh, out on a D expedition using the uh, Benito Megaactive MA three hundred five antenna. Some really interesting results, bearing in mind that, you know, the S8800 is a great receiver, but it's pretty expensive. I can't remember what it costs. Is it like £300? And then you've got the XH data, which I think they've everywhere's run out of stock. That I got mine for 60 quid. So you're talking about, you know, five times the price, you know, what's the delta on performance? Well, obviously, as I'm sure you can imagine, it's not a factor of five, but um, I've got reception videos using the same signal test, comparing directly those two receivers. So that's coming, and that's coming pretty soon. Um... In terms of transatlantic medium wave DX, I'm so far behind uh, with my um, band recordings. Um, I must have 20 or 30 band recordings that I haven't even analysed yet. And of those that I have analysed, I've got at least another 20 or 30 videos of medium wave DX, uh, transatlantic medium wave DX that hasn't appeared uh, on the channel. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm trying to kind of work my way through those. Whether I'll ever have the time to uh, analyse all those recordings, you know, it's not looking very likely. But the videos that I have extracted from the recordings that are sitting on the hard drive on one of my computers, I will try to upload. Um, you know, for completeness at least, you know, I don't, I don't operate a logbook, so I don't write anything down. The channel is basically my logbook. So recordings of uh, stations that I've copied, if they don't appear on the channel, then effectively my log is incomplete. So, you know, at some point they have to go on there. Um, so that's kind of about it, really. Um, my ham radio career has really been a bit of a non-starter. Um, I got my foundation ham license back in October before I went to Brazil last. Um, and I've set up the E-LAD, uh, obviously because it's a transceiver. Um, and I purchased a tunable whip antenna, a kind of mobile solution. Um, tried it in the back garden and nobody could hear me on five watts. Although the Soir was superb on it. Tuned up great, but 
I think it's just a whip antenna sat on a tripod in a back garden in a built up area. You're transmitting with five watts. Is it really five watts? Maybe it's only three or four watts and basically nobody can hear me on any band. So um, I then uh, got some advice from Graham, Radio Cruncher, mentioned it to him. He sent me the details for an inverted L antenna, which I constructed and set up and I couldn't get these SWA down below five. Um, but work and everything else is so busy at the moment, I literally didn't have time to pursue it, to investigate it, so I've dismantled it, to, and I'll come back to it another time. Um, so two things on my ham radio career. One is that I need a kind of boat anchor style transceiver. The ELAD is great, but you know you have to you're pushing buttons and shifting through menus, you know, to uh, to you know to set your uh, TX power and all the rest of it. It's just a pain. It does work, but it's a pain. So uh, at some point I need to buy a, 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 a traditional transceiver uh, and I need to figure out what I'm going to do about an antenna. In the meantime, my Bayer Feng uh, GT3, uh, using that I've made QSOs on 2 meters and 80 centimeters. Um, so that's nice, but ultimately me being me, I want to be heard on HF. So uh, I've got basically hardware issues a hundred percent hardware issues you know transceiver and antenna that need sorting and at some point i'll do it um, but i'm too tied up with work and i'm too tied up with everything else i'm doing on, on hf rx to uh, have the time so uh yeah i'll have to come back to that um in terms of trips coming my trip to brazil we originally intended was originally january uh, then it was march and then it was june and now it's basically end of august mid-september um, it won't happen later uh, uh, than sometime in September, um, likely to be end of August. Uh, and so on that trip, I'll be going back to Rio Capim, back to the Amazon jungle, uh, taking, uh, I will probably take the RSP-1A because it's very light. Um, I don't think I'm going to drag the RSP Duo there, um, but I'll take the RSP-1A, which is superb for the expedition out in the middle of nowhere because obviously it's USB powered. Um, and I will take one of my USB powered antennas, probably the MA305 again, but who knows, I might have something else by then, something portable. Um, and I'll take a portable receiver and that will probably be the PL880 and give that a run out there, see what we get. Um, other than that, I'm going to a conference in France, in Northern France, uh, first week of July, which is definitely on. So again, I will probably take uh, the SDR RSP1A and a portable um, have a think about what antennas um, and then I'm going to be in the United States at some point probably at least once between now and the end of the year so there's a few trips coming up um, and so I think that's about it so in you know in the meantime you know as I said thank you very much for all your support I'm really grateful I didn't ever imagine this could you know the channel could turn into something as big as it has um, you know it's still only a tenth of the size of some of the big boys like Gilles uh, etc um, but you know that's okay you know he, he does his thing and um, I do mine uh, you know uh, appreciate you know what he does um, it, it's a different kind of uh, a different approach to the hobby um, you know um, but you know uh, there's uh, room for everyone uh, so um, what I've also noticed actually recently is that I'm getting far, I mean this isn't an invitation, I'm getting far fewer thumbs down now than I was previously, so I don't know whoever was up to uh, that or stopped, I probably shouldn't have mentioned it, you know, uh, sod's law, but uh, you know, the, the, there's a general wave of appreciation these days, um, so that's great. Uh, on the downside, uh, I need to apologise because I really have not had enough time, spent enough time on you, you guys' channels. Um, you know, you make the time uh, to come and look at my stuff and I don't always come and look at your stuff. You know, at the moment I'm kind of looking at, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at videos on other channels about once or twice a week. Uh, and unfortunately that isn't going to change and there's two issues. One is that I'm so busy at work right now uh, and, uh, and I have, when you've, you know, I have 1660 plus subscribers, it's impossible to get around. Uh, to everybody uh, I wish I could but it's just impossible so uh, I try and uh, those that take the time to look at my channel you know, I try to reciprocate and I do it kind of once or twice a week but I do appreciate that you know I'm not visiting uh, other channels as often as mine has been visiting and you know I sort of feel bad about that but there's no way around it 
uh, you know, it is what it is. So um, I hope that that's okay with everybody. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, um, I wish you all fantastic DX. Um, yeah, there's obviously stuff, you know, I'm, I'm trying to put out a couple of videos every day, which is a bit difficult, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm averaging between 50 and 60 videos a month. So, you know, uh, I'm trying to keep the momentum going. I know it's, it, you know, it's a bit of a struggle because obviously I have a full-time job as well and a family and all the rest of it but I'm trying to uh, well for the past 16 months or so that's kind of where I've been averaging between sort of 50 and 60 videos a month and um, I will endeavor to to continue to do that um, and so you know it's quite a lot of work but obviously I love it so that's not an issue, uh, but, it, but it, it means a lot to know that it's appreciated by other people. So, you know, my grateful thanks to you guys for your continued support and, you know, and the fact that you keep watching. Uh, and I will do my best to make the videos as interesting, entertaining, as informative as I can. Um, so, you know, uh, that's basically all I can do. So, uh, yeah. So, I don't think I've forgotten anything. Um, I think that basically covers it. Uh, you know, what can I say? Thank you very much and I wish you the greatest of DX. Cheers.